I guess it's time for our quintessential lake date. <laughs> you know, I never knew lakes had waves. I mused as I gazed out of the rippling water. Until I moved here, that is. I always pictured lakes as these perfectly still mirrors. The surface glittered beneath the rays of the faint winter sun, yet there was no reflection to be seen. Supposedly, the waves are created by friction between the surface water and the wind. Not much different from the ocean, then. I thought back to the days before I lived here. Back then, whenever I saw the ocean, I longed to travel beyond the furthest reaches of the horizon. No. A lake is not the same as an ocean. A lake will not lead you to distant lands. I stared at him blankly. Not only did it feel like he had read my mind, but on top of that he disagreed. Sensing my gaze, he snickered. <laughs> at least, that's what I imagined they were thinking at the time. What? I am talking about Snow White and Red Riding Hood. Oh. They wanted to travel abroad? Yes. Though whether they were yearning for an escape or merely curious, I cannot say. Good question. I looked back at the lake and thought of the brothers. If they were looking for an escape, then they must have really hated their lives here. Have you ever wanted to leave the country? No, I haven't. How come? Well, let me ask you. Do you wish you could travel to another country? Not right now. And why is that? Well... Before I could answer, he pressed a finger to my lips. Um... Our feelings are one and the same. Almost as if we share the same heart. He moved away from me and walked toward the water. Come to think of it, when did you first arrive here in the Looking Glass world? A year and a half ago, I answered, gazing at his back. And that was when you met the five brothers? Yeah. Where were you before then? I lived in a different country. What brought you here? Well, I wanted to see him. Which one? I can't remember. Blondie. So you came to see? I dreamed of you again last night. Now and then I would gaze into the mirror. Unlike the real world, the mirror world showed me everything. Even the parts I didn't want to see. I knew if I reached out, I could pass through to the other side. But the milk in the mirror looked revolting, so I wasn't motivated to try. In the mirror world, that same doctor called to me dozens of times. I had figured out what he wanted, what he expected of me. But after I stubbornly refused to perform, he must have given up. It's no use. The project is a failure. And with that, he discarded me. He seemed angry with me for being a brat. After that, he paid me less and less attention until eventually, he stopped coming by entirely. Gazing into the mirror, I thought about his comments. Defective. Botched. He wanted perfection. But what is perfection? To be visibly smarter, more sociable, more athletic, more dexterous than the average person. To play the role other people expect of you, in other words. In that case, I didn't need an identity of my own. Taken one step further, if no one needed me, then my entire existence was unnecessary. Out of nowhere, something seized me by the leg, threatening to pull me down into its inky depths. I ran blindly through the dark. I knew the meaning of this darkness, and I knew if I let it consume me, I would cease to exist. 
It felt like someone was saying, If you won't behave, then I'll lock you in the looking glass house. It reminded me of a time not that long ago, when someone said something similar to me. I couldn't meet their expectations. And so I was discarded. And eradicated. I'm still trying to figure out if the wizard is a part of Alice or separate. I still don't know. I'm flying blind with these like flashback things. I'm just not entirely sure. Who's who? Who's dreaming? Who's speaking? Who's thinking? <laughs> I got no, no clue. Ugh. It's so hard to know. Something jostled me awake. Where am I? The next thing I knew, I was in a bed resting against someone's chest. My pulse was racing, and I was breathing so hard it felt like I'd just run a whole marathon. In order to get a grasp of the situation, I opened my eyes. Oh, hi. When did we... Um, what did I miss? Hello? She's even in pajamas and everything? My goodness. I mean, I'm not complaining, but... Good morning, Lady Arisa. Ah! Feeling his breath against my bangs, I let out a shriek. Then I slowly looked up to find a pair of amber eyes looking back at me. M Mr. Wizard? My heart pounded even faster. Was I still dreaming? Okay, so Eureka is experiencing these dreams as if it's her. Interesting. Okay. Which makes sense as she shares a consciousness with the dreamer. This is useful information. Thank you, Eureka. Or was I really cuddled up in bed with the wizard? Either way, I don't want the dream to end. Suffice it to say, it was a very romantic position to be in. But I had only met him a few days ago, and our relationship was strictly professional. I had no recollection of ever taking things to the next level, so to speak. Surely, this had to be a dream, then. But if this was the dream, then what about the other dream? Was that real life? As I writhed in confusion, the wizard regarded me calmly. Did you have a nightmare? Your complexion is rather pale. His arm shifted slightly beneath me as he reached up to stroke my hair. Smack his hand away. I don't know what the play is. I, I was all the other options so far have been basically. Um, remember how you dealt with your old boyfriend? <laughs> and this is like really the first interactive choice with the wizard. Uh, does it matter? Maybe not. Mm, no. His peaceful smile and soft touch gradually put me at ease. And then he choked me to death because it was a bad ending. I felt it was safe to trust him, just as I had the first day we first just as I had the day we first met, rather. I notice you haven't pulled away. Aren't you frightened? Huh? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Should I be worried about it? A short while later, I was finally calm enough to ask him my burning question. So, uh, what are you doing here? At this, the wizard smiled brightly. You wouldn't let go of me. Oh, that's when I realized I was clinging to his shirt. But we were at the lake. How did we get from talking about waves at the lake to the bedroom? <laughs> uh, what happened? I'm so sorry! Hastily, I let go. Nothing to apologize for. It's nice to feel needed, after all. Heat flashed through my body. 
Extrapolating from this conversation, he must have been stuck here the whole time I was asleep. For that matter, I couldn't even remember when we got back. And yet, here I was in my in bed, and in my PJs too. At the rate we were headed, we might come under fire for some unscrupulous behavior. Scandalous, even. Yet somehow he didn't look panicked in the least. I felt so pathetic, getting flustered when he clearly wasn't. It infuriated me, even though it wasn't his fault. <laughs> Despite having only just let go, I grabbed his shirt again. He showed no signs of resisting. Instead, he continued to look at me, his expression unchanged. Then I realized something. He wasn't wearing his jacket. I was. It was unmistakably a kind gesture on his part. I kept getting these little glimpses of his personality that I didn't quite understand. Girl, I feel you. And possibly because of that... I... I had a dream. A dream where I was about to be killed. The next thing I knew, I was telling him about my dream. Hearing the tension in my voice, his smile faded. In the dream, I was desperately trying to run away from something. It was pitch black, and I couldn't see. And I was terrified. Then something grabbed my leg, and I fell. The darkness crawled up my body, engulfing me. Then my mind started to fade and I started to forget. Almost like I was being erased. That does sound frightening. Yeah. The blackmail letter must be stressing you out. Let's bring someone in here. That'll help you feel better. Who should I get? He gently took me by the arm and sat me upright. I want you. The second I realized he was going to leave, I automatically stopped him. The wizard paused for a moment. Are you really that opposed to choosing one person? Very well. As you wish, I shall stay by your side. With a self-deprecating smile, he got back in bed. Thank you. I felt so relieved. And the fact I felt this way made me hate myself. Here I was, sharing a bed with someone else, pouring my heart out to him, all behind my fiancé's backs. It felt like I was cheating on the men who loved me. I mean, you kinda are. Anyway... As I was saying, I always thought I wasn't afraid to die. Why is that? I don't know. I'm not suicidal, my life isn't miserable, and I'm not spiritually enlightened or anything like that. But I've always been the kind of girl who would do anything to achieve her goals, so... Maybe I'm just prepared to die for my mission. What was it you said again? A mission so important it gives your entire life purpose. Your destiny. And yet... When I was about to disappear, I resisted. Perhaps you didn't want to die without first achieving your goal. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I felt sorry for myself. Do you think maybe, deep down, I'm afraid of death? From there, the wizard explained that I had passed out of the lake. Naturally, my fiancés were all very worried, and they had been taking turns checking on me. Part of me wished he had told me sooner, but I was the one who stopped him and changed the subject, so it wasn't really his fault. So you just inexplicably passed out, and were clinging to him so much that they couldn't, like, extricate you at all? Oof. That's gotta suck for the boys. When I walked into the living room, the five brothers all called for me at once. Sister, are you sure you should be out of bed right now? In a blink, I was surrounded on all sides and peppered with questions about my current condition. I'm okay now. Thanks for looking out for me. 
I smiled reassuringly at each of them in turn. Then, once they were sure I was alright, their attention turned to the wizard. Hey, you! You didn't try anything funny with her, did you? I mean, you guys could have stayed in the bedroom and made sure if you were that worried about everything. Such as? You know... Uh... <laughs> well, that's oddly specific. <clears throat> Did you pin her down on the bed and tell her you were going to take her tights off as an excuse to put your hand under her skirt? Calm down, Gretel! <laughs> and Red's gone. Gah. Now look what you've done! Red's passed out on the damn floor! <laughs> when it comes to women, I'm not quite as tactless as you are, I'm afraid. Ooh, get him, honey! What? I was somewhat stunned to find them all carrying on like usual. Not that I wanted them to be at each other's throats, mind you, but I did feel a little silly for getting so worried. As I stood there watching their shenanigans, Kaguya whispered in my ear. To be clear, they're trying to play it off, but you should have seen them last night. Of course we want answers from the two of you, but that had put my poppet in a tight spot, in it? Oh, I see. My mood quickly plummeted. They were all a lot more responsible and caring than I gave them credit for. Are you tired, Poppet? Perhaps you ought to go and have a lie down. Yeah, maybe. As I spoke, my eyes were on Cinderella and Gretel as they ripped into the wizard. Not physically. Yet. Mr. Wizard? Yes. Would you come with me? <laughs> Again? Instantly, all eyes widened and all jaws dropped in perfect sync. Scandalous. And so I led the wizard back to my bedroom. <laughs> we are just the worst. Oh, I feel so bad for these boys. Guys, get out of here. Run away. <laughs> are you sure we should be alone together right now? I am your client, you know. I know, but I feel bad for your fiancés. The wizard's sympathy was always directed at them, never me. I mean, you don't really need sympathy. <laughs> I'm sorry, girl. I know you had a bad nightmare and stuff, but like, honestly, my sympathy is for the boys, too. I knew I was in the wrong, and I didn't expect him to take my side every time, but I really hated feeling judged. Well, maybe you shouldn't do stuff that is worthy of being judged, girl. Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> I paused for a moment. Are you uncomfortable being around me? I looked up at him coquettishly. This is exactly what I'm talking about! No, not really. Then what does it matter? I enjoy spending time with you. I sat down on the bed and smiled. I knew I wasn't playing fair, but if it would get him on my side, then to hell with the rules. He smiled dryly, like he'd seen right through me. Meanwhile, I glanced around restlessly. Then I noticed something. Wait, what? I had left my chessboard sitting on the coffee table, but the pieces had moved since the last time I touched it. Did you move my chess pieces? I pointed over at the board. I got bored while you were asleep. Whoa! I didn't realize you knew how to play chess! I rose to my feet and walked over to get a better look at the board. The white rooks were at G1 and E1, a white knight was at G3, a white pawn was at F4, and the white king was at G8. The black rooks were at D7 and H7, the black queen was at F6, a black knight was at G6, and a black pawn was at F5. Oh, this is a chess problem, isn't it? 
chess problems, puzzles in which the goal is to achieve checkmate under preset conditions. I grabbed the white knight and captured a black rook. For what it's worth, I considered myself pretty good at chess. Then I spun around and beamed confidently. Wanna play a match with me? At my challenge, the wizard smirked deviously. I don't mind, but I hope you're prepared to lose. Man, after all this, like, the CG dry spell we were having, now we're getting, like, all the gorgeousness. I'm quite content. We each set up our pieces. White for me and black for him. Obviously. Six years ago, two of the five brothers met someone new under near identical circumstances. Red Riding Hood met Wolf, and Snow White met Ryoshi. As he spoke, the wizard moved his pieces. Six years ago, Snow White would have been 13, and Red Riding Hood would have been 15, right? Hearing this, it suddenly felt very weird that Snow White was the second son, despite being younger than Red. Right? Ryoshi was 23 at the time. And Wolf is the same age as me, so he would have been 13 too. I moved my pieces as I spoke. That's quite the age gap. Yeah, no kidding. That was something I'd noticed, too. Not the age gap between Ryoshi and Snow White, but the gap between Wolf and Red. The way they talked about their friendship, you'd think they were the same age, but Red was already old enough to be in high school by that point. Then again, Wolf was a chatty, sociable guy, so maybe the age difference didn't even register with him. You're forgetting one other thing. Huh? Their mother passed away that same spring six years ago. Oh. I looked up from the board. When our eyes met, the wizard smirked at me. <laughs> A lot must have happened that year, huh? I averted my gaze bashfully. He adopted his usual pose, crossing his legs and resting his chin in his hand. Yes. Perhaps it was a significant time in their lives. And one move later... Checkmate. The wizard declared loftily. Ah! I looked back at the board to find his queen checking my king. I... I lost? I told you at the start to be prepared to lose, did I not? Believe it or not, I'm quite good at chess. Rematch! I demand a rematch! Just like that, he had provoked my competitive side. Knowing you, you'll want to keep playing until you win, won't you? Sounds like you know me well. Believe it or not, I'm a sore loser! Yeah, I know. What? Stunned, I blinked at him. He sighed. Ah, <sighs> fine. We can play as many times as it takes to satisfy you. Okay, then. But not right now. Lest you forget, your life is in danger. First, we must solve the case. I slumped my shoulders. I couldn't argue with that. All right, then. In that case, I expect a rematch as soon as this case is solved. Certainly. Was that a hint that I have to fail his route to beat him? <laughs> I w it was something that occurred to me. When I was editing the last one, I'm like, considering we've only ever, you know, for the most part, run into the wizard when doing bad endings, do we have to, like, intentionally, quote unquote, go for a bad ending to get his good ending? Is that what we have to do? Maybe not. Maybe I'm overthinking things, but I'm like, mm, it would be a twist. It would make sense, but we'll see. With that settled, we wasted no time heading straight for Snow White's room. Today, we wanted to discuss his mother. Oh, boy. Snow White! Hey, Arisa. What's up? Sorry to spring this on you, but could we ask you about your mom? And he was in such a good mood, too. At this, Snow White scowled openly. No surprise there, of course. 
After all, asking Snow White about his mother meant dredging up his least favorite memories. Because of that, honestly, I expected him to stand there in silence or tell us to go away. But instead, he reacted in a way I wasn't expecting. He looked from me to the wizard and let out a sigh. Oh. What do you want to know about her? I stared at him in shock for a moment before quickly recovering. Well, what was she like? <laughs> he tilted his head slightly in contemplation. She was sweet and innocent and cheerful. She never lost touch with her inner child. She sounds nice. Yeah, she really was. He smiled, then he looked deep into my eyes. <laughs> what? I was just thinking. You remind me of her. I do? He nodded. You don't look alike, but you both have the same sort of vibe. If she could have met you, I'm sure she would have loved you like her own daughter. She always loved princesses like you. I wasn't sure how to respond to this, so I fell silent. Then the wizard spoke up. Snow White, I'm told you're acquainted with Ryoshi. And changed the subject. Yeah, I am. What of it? Snow White narrowed his eyes. He told me you first met at the lake. What were you doing out there in the middle of the night? Not much. Just looking at the water. He averted his gaze awkwardly. The Looking Glass Lake is famous for reflecting everything upside down, like a mirror. How did you feel when you saw your reflection? Does it really matter? I hear you dislike your own appearance. Does that have something to do with it? Mm. Ooh, the music change. Snow White pursed his lips together and glared at the wizard. All at once, this had taken a deeply uncomfortable turn, so I hastily cut in. Sorry for asking you all these nosy questions! It's fine. You don't have to apologize. He's right. After all, I'm the one asking the nosy questions. Sadly, I was unable to clear the heavy discomfort hanging in the air. The wizard relaxed his posture, letting his arms hang down at his sides. Allow me to change the subject. Precisely when was it that your mother passed? Evidently he had no intention of going easy on Snow White. This again. I apologize, but we've encountered a few unclear points. Will breaking my silence help Arisa in some way? Of course. Upon hearing this, Snow White's hostile aura seemed to soften. Then he looked back at the wizard and reluctantly began to speak. As I recall, it was around the end of March, because it was still really cold. That day, I found myself standing outside the house without knowing how I got there. Mother had warned me time and time again not to go out, yet I disobeyed her. The lights were on inside, so I figured Mother must be home. Nervously, I put my hand on the doorknob. I wasn't sure whether she would be mad at me or just worried for my safety. But as it turned out, the answer was neither. Instead, she stared at me with cold, unfeeling eyes. When I touched her, she was ice cold. Instantly, I knew she was gone. But I loved her so much. I just couldn't accept that she was dead. I thought maybe I was wrong about the whole thing. Maybe she would come home if I just waited long enough. That was what I told myself for weeks while I lived with her empty shell. And it was that spring that you met Ryoshi. Yeah, that's right. I met him after she passed. At the time, 
I was at my limit. In more ways than one. My beautiful mother grew uglier with each passing day, and I couldn't turn back time. I couldn't bear it, so I fled from the house. Then you met Ryoshi one night at the lake. Yeah. He nodded quietly. Ryoshi was a good guy. I knew he would believe me. So I told him everything. If the two of you are so close, then why do you refuse to meet with him? Ryoshi and I both know that it's best we don't. If I can shoulder the burden of these painful memories so no one else has to, then so be it. Memories? But the wizard spoke over me. Beautifully selfless of you, Snow White. Sharing your story has helped us a great deal. However, this has only created more questions. Why was your mother so opposed to you going outside? She was a good person, correct? Why would she try to imprison you? If I had to guess... In the beginning, she probably just wanted me to watch the house while she was at work. But then she changed. How so? She grew cold. I don't mean physically. It was her attitude toward me. Cold and aloof. She was always busy with work, but whenever she came home, no matter how tired she was, she would always hug me. But then, we started seeing less and less of each other, and eventually she stopped trying at all. She was exhausted. In the beginning, I figured she was just busy, but it was more than that. Then I looked in the mirror and realized... I wasn't her real child. Cut! You really just gonna cut there, eh? <laughs> so rude! Okay, we gotta start digging deep into all these boys. Here we go. We really gotta get buckled in for all these things. Cinderella is the one I'm, like, the most interested in. Just because, like, his... I mean, yes, it was terrible. His you know, his father got into debt, couldn't face it, and ran away from his wife and child. But compared to the trauma that the other ones went through, I'm I'm curious. I'm really curious about him. Next, we paid a visit to Red Riding Hood. All that chess, plus talking to Snow White, had eaten up a surprising amount of time. Overhead, the sky was already orange. Red! What is it? Sorry to drop in on you. Could we ask you something? Red looked at me with concern, possibly still worried about my health. Of course. By all means, ask away. In your opinion, what was your mother like? Taking Snow White's reaction into consideration, I decided to just be straight with him. Well, uh... Do I really have to answer that? Like Snow White, Red Riding Hood was reluctant, though not to the same extent. Only if you want to help Lady Arisa, the wizard shrugged. It'll help her. He looked from me to the wizard and back. While Snow White and Red Riding Hood didn't seem to have much in common, at times like these you could totally tell they were related. Truth be told, I don't remember her very well. What? After all, she was rarely ever home. If I had to describe her, I would say she was an emotionally distant person who focused on her own priorities and neglected her child. His opinion of her was the total opposite of Snow White's. What do you mean, her priorities? Her work. She was always busy selling flowers. But Snow White said... I started to argue, but the wizard held up a hand to stop me. Just let it play out, just let it play out. So your mother was never home? Right. 
She was a distant presence in my life. I knew she was my mother, but it didn't really feel like it. I don't remember her ever treating me kindly, nor did she ever yell at me. I see. The wizard folded his arms and nodded to himself. A slight change of subject. I hear your old friends with Wolf. Is that true? What? Uh... Yes. He stammered, caught off guard by the question. You were at the lake one day when Wolf struck up a conversation. Nevertheless, the wizard pressed on. Yes. Why were you at the lake that day? Shouldn't you have been at school? Well... My mother said I didn't need to attend. And why is that? Red froze, conflicted. I looked at the wizard, wondering if it was safe to keep asking questions, but he simply pressed his index finger to his lips reassuringly. Sure enough, Red slowly regained his composure and began to speak. My mother always told me, You're not like all the other kids. You're a precious angel. The world is filled with wicked wolves, and you can never trust them. So if one of them talks to you, be sure to ignore them. You have to watch the house while I'm gone, understand? And if anyone knocks on the door, don't let them in, no matter what. But you wanted to go outside. Yes. So you disobeyed her orders to stay at home and went out regardless? Yes. Red slumped his shoulders like a criminal caught red-handed. I'm not judging you for doing what you did. I think it's only natural that you would have yearned for the outside world. Any other teenager would have been at school, making friends and having fun. <laughs> As an aside, do you remember the time your mother passed away? At this, Red looked up suddenly in alarm. Well... Then he hung his head once more. His riding hood concealed his expression. One day, I was at the lake with Wolf, like usual. Then a man in a hunter's coat showed up in a tizzy. According to him, Wolf's grandmother had collapsed and she was asking to see him. I loved grandmother very much. So I lied and said I was Wolf so that I could go and see her. I don't really remember what happened after that. I'm not sure what happened to Grandmother, or even how I made it home from the hospital. The next thing I knew, I was outside the house. Oddly enough, the lights were on inside. I figured my mother must be home. Nervously, I put my hand on the doorknob. Would she be angry with me? Or was she just worried for my safety? Then I opened the door and there I found my answer. It was then that I understood my mother wasn't going to yell at me, nor would she hug me. Instead, she stared at me with cold, unfeeling eyes. And after that day, she never came home again. So in other words, she had already passed by the time you got there. I'm not sure. Why not? Because I don't remember. The next thing I knew, my mother was gone, and I... I vowed never to go astray again. But even then... He lifted his head and shot a glance in my direction. I didn't know how to react, so I smiled at him out of habit. I understand. Thanks to you, I think we've gotten closer to the truth. I see. I'm glad to hear it. He pulled his hood low over his eyes. Could I ask one final question? Certainly. Why was it that your mother never wanted you to leave home? Because I was physically different from the other children. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that part of your route as well. 
wolf ears and everything. Right, 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 man. That was hinted like so long ago and I just like completely blocked it out. How so? But Red didn't explain further. <laughs> 